Hey, welcome to another video. Uh, this will be the fourth video for our Jackson and JSON modifier. We are going to do a little bit of customization with a class called car. So let's, uh, let's take a review of what we've built so far. So if you look in my project folder, you can see that I have this car object here. And so the properties of car are listed here. And we've got ourselves a list of cars as well. And so now we're going to extend this. We're going to take a, a new car. So let's make a new class. And I think a good name for this is Supercar. And we're going to show here that this extends the previous car. So I'm going to browse for the car object here and click OK. Or I could have just typed in the word car for the super class. Either one would work. Now the point here is that the supercar is going to have some extra kinds of properties and this will make it more challenging to save as a list. So let's come up with a property and uh, let's give it a fuel octane level. So this will be an integer. And then another property we'll call a boolean and this property will say that a supercar has a thruster. Okay, so you can do any kind of properties you like but they just have to be distinguished from the regular car. So now we're going to go into the source menu here, right click and choose source and let's do the getters and setters first of all. So this is standard stuff here. We select the getters and setters for both properties and click OK. So now we have some extra properties, extra methods. So the other thing this will need is a constructor. So let's go into the source and I'm going to choose the constructor using the super class. So this will look a little different. You can see that there are two constructors. One is the default, has no parameters, and the other has all the parameters for car. Now, we're going to modify the second constructor that has the parameters. So, the first thing I have to do is add the extra uh, two different properties. So we have this uh, fuel octane, and then this has thrusters. They both have to be added because it's a supercar. Now also in the constructor you would expect those parameters to be passed in so we have to put those up in the uh, parameters area as well. So we have an integer for fuel octane and a boolean for the has thrusters. Alright so then we can put those two parameters in as values for the uh, instance of the object. So fuel octane and has thrusters. Now we have ourselves two constructors, one with no parameters and the other with the parameters that are fully parameterized. I guess is how you say it. Okay, so now the challenge is that if we can add one of these cars to the list, can we still read and write from it? Because it'll be different kinds of data. So let's generate a new supercar in the uh, main program. And so we'll come up with some junk for its uh, data. So 2020 for its uh, year, uh, Ford Rocket it's called. It only has 500 miles, it has a huge engine with 10.9 and of course if we have the option for thrusters then we should probably put it on. The fuel octane is pretty high octane gas here so 109 test. Alright so uh, I've got an error, what's the problem here? I didn't spell the class correctly, it is a new supercar. There we have it. Okay so now we're ready to create S1. We've got S1 in memory so let's add it to the list. So let's go down to the section where the lists are being constructed and we'll add S1. It looks like you have to spell list with a capital L. All right, so you can see that even though it's not exactly the same as the original car, it is allowed to be added to the list because it extends it. I run the program and I still get some issues. I got errors. Down at the bottom it says we have something called an unrecognized field, octane. And so the problem is that we've just picked up this new strange uh, property. Let's go down and look at my JSON file. And you can see that all the other cars only have like four properties. And the supercar has octane and the other is the thruster. So these two things throw off the Jackson library. So let's go see if there's some customizations in the directions that we can understand and help us build a file reader as well as a file writer. Okay, so I'm up here at the top where I've got the uh, the addresses here. It's called Inheritance with Jackson. This is some of the official documentation. So I'm scrolling down through the page here 
and I'm looking for uh, any cases that look like what I've got here. So you can see that they're doing inheritance and then you can see in their J J JSON uh, file that they have some new tags that are telling the file type at the, at the very beginning. So we're getting close and here is the gold in my gold mine. I am looking for this example where I decorate the base class with some at symbols, some modifiers. So I'm going to copy their code and come back into my program. So the base class in my case is the car class. So I'm going to put the example code right before the definition for public class car. I'm going to import all of these uh, different Jackson decorators or modifiers. And when I'm done, I will have pretty close to where I want to be. So car class is one of their classes. Instead of truck, I'm changing it to supercar. And these two strings, car and super, at the end of the line can be any string. So I'm just going to use it car and super. And I run the program. And look, there's no errors. It read, it wrote and it read data into my JSON file. Let's go look at the file again and see what changed. Now there's a new line for every car. It's called type. So that way when it reads the data, it can understand what kind of car it's expecting. And the last one is a supercar. So let's look at the uh, output here, and it shows that, yes, we did read a new car at the end. It's a supercar. All right, when you look at the end, we see that the car is displaying all of its properties, but perhaps the last two properties are missing. So we didn't get an error, but it didn't also print all the properties. Now we can fix this. It's not any problem because of the Jackson library. It's because that this uh, supercar doesn't have a two-string method. So it only used the uh, two-string method from car. So let's fix that problem. Let's go to the car class, and let's start by copying the two-string method that we've already built there. Go back into supercar and paste it and modify the results. So we have ourselves the output at the return line. So the output, first of all, has to be supercar, and then to get the properties of the car that it inherited from, it has to choose the word super dot get something. So get the property. So super dot uh, get make and super dot get model. And then probably super dot get odometer reading or something along those lines. So all the way through we use the properties from its uh, inherited class. So using the word super. And then at the end of the string we finally get to the custom properties. So octane is going to be not from the super class, but from this class itself. So we can just put in the word octane, and then we can also grab the thrusters as well from the current class. So the overriding of the two string method should give us a correct output at the uh, printout. Let's see, the word octane is incorrect. So we'll probably have to come back and modify that, it's going to be uh, uh, fuel octane. Okay, so we got the right property names. There's no errors anymore in the code. Let's run it again. And hopefully the output comes out accurate this time. So scroll to the right to see what the output is. Yes, it does say supercar, and it shows the year. And at the end of the properties, it does have octane and thrusters. So it looks like uh, it was just an issue with our two string. Okay, finally, let's do an extra uh, property on the uh, cars list. So what happens if I put in extra things that I really don't want in my JSON file? For example, let's create a new property. So for instance, I'd like to add a new property for some reason called list counter. It will just tell me the number of items in the list. Uh, I don't know what this is for, but um, it's just going to pollute my data. So I'm going to uh, create the getters and setters for it and then uh, let's uh, save it and run it again. Okay, so I didn't have any problems, it didn't crash, but if you look at my data set, look at cars list, and scroll to the bottom, we've got this new property that it printed out dutifully just because it's part of the uh, class. And so list counter is set to zero. Well, I really don't want that in my list, so I would like it to ignore this property. Let's see if there's anything in the documentation about ignoring. Well, sure enough, down here it says part three, ignoring properties from a supertype. 
So there's a few ways to do it. The simplest way is just a item called ignore. So let's see if we can come through here and find how we do ignore. So let's see, ignore. We'll highlight it. Here it is. So you can, at the top of the class, you can tell it to ignore certain properties. For instance, you could say ignore the model, ignore the, the seating capacity. Or just before the property itself, you can put in JSON ignore. So let's see if we can make that work in our set. I'm going to use the simpler one here just because I don't want to have so much typing. All right, so let's go back into the code and I find my cars list. And the property that I would like to ignore is this one here. So I'm going to put in the at symbol, JSON ignore, no semicolon. And now it says you can't use this until you import. So I'm going to import from the Jackson library from annotations. And you can see that uh, we are going to ignore the list counter. So let's save that and run it again. And the same results come out in the code. However, let's look in the JSON file. Scrolling to the bottom, and you notice there is no size of the list now. It's just the cars. So for our case, it didn't make sense to have the list counter in the in inclusion for the file name. So you'll find that in some of your properties as well. So looking at the documentation will help you customize how you use your library.